Hi everyone, welcome to Better Biomed. Today, I'm gonna to go over a topic that's probably gonna get me in trouble, but I think for the greater good, we need to get this knowledge out to the public. We're gonna go over bulbs of the Patero and the Canevo family, along with tips and tricks on how to reprogram each of those bulbs. Sometimes you can double the life of the bulb, and in other instances, we just rebuild the bulb, reprogram the hours, and you can utilize it. Now, in no way am I condoning the use of a reprogrammed bulb on patients. That's up for you to decide. But this trick can save your department and your hospital thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands of dollars, every year. So stick with me. I hope you learned something, because I know I sure did when I came up with this technique. Hope you enjoy it. The first bulb that we're going to cover is the Pentero family bulb. Now this one here comes in a magnesium carrier. And to access the bulb, you release the lock. And then you can see the face of the bulb. Now these bulbs are Osram XBO R300W-60C. You can find these bulbs, they're usually around five to six hundred dollars from good retailers. And one of the things you want to take notice on the bulb is that this one has covered with a film. It's a mylar film. Now the Osram bulb that you buy from anybody else, it does not have that film. And the justification for the film from Zeiss themselves is that if the bulb explodes, then the film helps keep the reflector housing together. But the reflector housing is really thick glass. Really thick. But if you look at the front face, there is a bulb with compressed gas for your arc lamp, and it's made of really thin glass. So if a bulb shatters from a malfunction or from an impact, this thin glass is what's gonna explode, not the back. This here is just a marketing ploy. So anyway, you'll take notice down here at the bottom, there is a USB port, and when you insert the bulb into the Pentero, an interface will plug in right here, it will read a hex value for the hours, and then it will update the hours count on the Pentero. One thing that you should know is that Pentero has this bulb rated at 500 hours. At 500 hours, they say you need to switch this guy out. However, Osram themselves say that this is a 1,000 hour bulb. And since it's in a magnesium housing and it's got forced air cooling, there's no reason why you would have to short cycle this bulb at 500 hours. You have the option, if you want, to reprogram the bulb one time put a mark on the bulb, and then put it back in the Pentero to run another 500 hours, because that's its manufacturer rated life expectancy. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you guys how to reprogram this bulb. There's a few things that you're gonna need first. The first thing that you're gonna need is obviously a computer, but the second thing that you're gonna need is the Spark Fun Bus Pirate. It's available for 30 to $40, and then you have the option of either making your own wiring harness or buying an extra wiring harness for maybe five or six dollars extra. So the way this works is your bus pirate will plug into the PC and then you access a terminal program to talk to the EEPROM that is on the bulb. The EEPROM stores 256 bytes worth of data, so it's not very much. And in that 256 bytes, there's the serial number of the bulb and the hours. You can see here, I have placed one of my bus pirates in a protective housing. I have one end that will plug into the bulb. And I have a second end that I plug into my PC. It's all one contained unit. So I'm gonna show you guys how to update the code on a bulb using one of these. In order to use a bus pirate with a Pentero bulb, it has to be wired into a USB connector. The standard USB cable consists of four different color wires, red, white, green, and black. The red wire is gonna go to the VCC of your bus pirate, which is the plus five volts. The white wire is gonna connect to the MOSI, M-O-S-I, that's your serial data port. The green wire is gonna to connect to your CLK, which is your clock signal. 
that tells it when to carry out an instruction. The black wire is going to go to the ground port, which is right here. One of the ways to wire this in is to use one of these cables. This breakout cable can often be bought on the same Amazon website that you buy the Bus Pirate. If not, you can use four pin cables that are often found inside PC cases, which is what I did with my other Bus Pirate. Once you have the wires attached to their designated pins, the next step is reprogramming the bulb. The first step is to plug your Bus Pirate into your USB port. The second side, you will plug in to the bulb. And we'll just go ahead and put that off to the side. The next part is to set up your terminal program. I recommend using Realterm for your terminal program. The link will be in the description. It's a very efficient terminal program that has options like push out a script file, which is what we're going to do to reprogram this bulb. Otherwise, you have to go line for line and post lines of code, and that just takes forever. So we're just going to send one file over, it's going to reprogram the bulb, and we'll be done. Once Realterm is installed, the first thing you're going to do is open it up, and you'll be greeted by a black screen. First thing is to come down here and select ANSI, display as. Then you're going to click on port, and you're going to change your baud rate to 115,200. And you're going to select the COM port. Normally the COM port is going to be this dash VCP0. It'll say dash VCP or slash VCP. That's most likely going to be the COM port that the bus pirate is on. You can see here on COM6, it says dash VCP0. Click change. The next thing you're going to do is click up in the display and you're going to hit enter. You should see high Z up in the corner. High Z is the bus pirate. So you're actually talking to the board, not to the light bulb. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit M. It's a lowercase m space 4 enter. It's going to ask you what speed do you want to communicate at. You're going to hit 4 for 400 kilohertz. Enter. And now you can see it's in I2C mode, which is the EEPROM on your bulb. So once you're in I2C mode, then you're going to type capital W, capital P, enter. And that turns on your power supplies and your pull-up resistors so now the computer can talk to the bulb. Once all that's done, you're ready to reprogram. Once you have your port set up, your power supplies are on and your pull-up resistors are on, the next step is to come over to the Send tab. Down here at the bottom, there's three dots next to a drop-down box. You're going to click on the three dots and you're going to select your Pintero bulb code file. Since the Pintero bulb is what you're reprogramming, once your file is loaded, you're going to set your delays. Your first delay is a character delay, which I set at 6 milliseconds. And the second box here is a line delay or your carrier return, and I set that for 30 milliseconds. Once you have your delay set, click Send File. The scrolling text on the left is the program actually reprogramming the hours on the bulb. When you see ACK, that means that it's acknowledged what you requested and it's completed that task. So this bulb is complete. Now that it's done, you can disconnect the bulb, put it in a Pintero, and test it out. Once the bulb is finished programming, go ahead and disconnect it. And we're going to put the faceplate back on. Now the latch on the faceplate will go in a notch in the top of the magnesium carrier. So we're going to line up the faceplate in the groove and rotate it until the latch is right above the notch and then pull on the handle. Now the bulb is programmed and ready to go. Kinevos use a smaller parabolic style lamp. The part number on the Kinevo bulb itself appears to be proprietary so you'll never find it online. However, I did find ME300BFML is physically and electrically basically the same bulb. 
Here you can see a Knievel bulb in the carrier, and on the bottom is your interface card that has your hours count. On the opposite side of this interface card is a little EE prom that we're going to reprogram. The way that I was able to reprogram this bulb is I took a clear piece of plastic and I laid it on top of the bulb and with a black marker I traced out the holes for the power ports. Then I shaped and filed them till they're the correct size and I was able to lay the clear plastic evenly across the bottom of the bulb. Once I had the clear plastic across the bottom of the bulb, I then put marks on the electrical contacts exactly where I needed to drill tiny little holes. After I drilled the tiny little holes, I took the wire and I went in one hole and out the other and it created tiny little electrical contacts that you can see here. The pin out for the contacts is going to be pin 3 pin 5, pin 6, and pin 7. Pin 3, which is this little pin right here, is going to be ground. Next is pin 5, which is VCC 5 volt. The next pin, pin 6, is your serial data port, which connects to the MOSI, M-O-S-I, on your bus pirate. Pin 7 is your clock signal it'll connect to the CLK pin on the bus pirate. So this might be crude, but this is what I got right now to program the bulbs. Down in the description, I'll have a CNC file and DXF file so that you too can cut one out with precision, much better than I did here. It's based off of measurements of the bulb carrier. So at the other end of this cable, I've got four wires. I'll connect those to their designated pins on the bus pirate. It's going to be ground, plus 5 volts, CLK, which is clock, and then on the opposite side is MOSI, M-O-S-I. Once you have the correct wires connected to the correct pins, next step is reprogramming the bulb. So I'm going to set the bus prior off to the side. I'm going to take my adapter plate that I made. It's going to fit over the bulb so that the wires align with the correct pins. I made mine with a little extra slop, so if you use the CNC file, it's going to be very precise and you won't have to worry about this little bit of slop. Either way, I take a little vise, like this one, and I put my bulb in it gently. Next we're going to reprogram the bulb using real term. First you set up your baud rate, which is 115,200. Next you're going to select your COM port. For me, it's COM port 3, but for you it could be whatever. And then click change. Next you're going to click up in the dark of the screen, and then you're going to press enter. You should see high Z, which means now you're talking to the bus pirate. Once you're at the high Z prompt, then you're going to press lowercase m, space, the number four, enter. You're gonna select four for 400 kilohertz, press enter. Now it's in I2C mode and you're ready to talk to your EE prom. You're gonna type a capital W and a capital P. That turns your power supplies on and your power up resistors so that the chip can successfully communicate with the bus pirate. The next step is to come down to the send tab there's three little dots next to the drop-down dialog. Click on them, then navigate to the Knievo file. Click on Final Knievo Bulb Code, Open. Next, you're going to set your delays. The first box is for your character delay. You're going to set that to 6. And the second box, you're going to set to 30. Once all that's ready to go, then click Send File. You'll see scrolling text in the left hand side, followed by an ACK. ACK means it acknowledges what you asked it to do and it has successfully carried it out. So we're going to sit back and wait for it to finish programming. It should only take about 15 to 20 seconds. Once it's completed, 
go ahead and disconnect the bulb and you're ready to go.